What's up guys, my name is Mitch and I am from Mitch's Kitchen and this is The Taste of Success. Um, I'm going to be interviewing all sorts of amazing people from athletes to fans of business and today's guest is none other than free running legend Sebastian Foucan. Hi. Hi guys. <laughs> How are you doing? Good, good, thank you. I'm very well, thank you. Good. Um, so for those who have never heard of you or haven't seen you before, um, tell us about you um, and... What is free running essentially? Okay, so my name is Sebastian Foucault. So I started, uh, I'm one of the founder of uh, the discipline called parkour or free running or however people want to call it. I started in the late eighties uh, doing uh, these kind of activities and now it's a global phenomenon. So I'm well known for being in the opening sequence, the chase sequence uh, in the James Bond Casino Royale. Uh, but also for those who are very uh, familiar with the parkour world, uh, I'm, uh, I've been uh, in a documentary called Jump London and Jump Britain. And, uh, and that's it. And I touch a lot of other um, plays for the entertaining world, working with Madonna, uh, working with Nike, working with K-Swiss. So, uh, yeah, as a professional, I, I touch, I would say, the top of uh, what can be rich in terms of uh, performance. And now I've got an academy, so I'm teaching uh, activities for children. So that's what I do. Amazing. Yeah, so um, coming full circle, it was actually Jump London and Jump Britain that got me into free running. So those that yeah. have only just recently found Mitch's Kitchen and what I do, um, free running was something that I started when I was 15 after seeing that documentary. Um, so I am eternally grateful for you and what you've kind of inspired me which has essentially led me on this trajectory to food because when I discovered free running from yourself, I then decided I needed to eat better. I needed to perform better. Um, I was quite overweight at the time. I lost about two stone in three months and had this whole new love for movement and, and kind of eating. So it's amazing that it's come full circle from speaking to yourself, well, seeing yourself on the telly doing these amazing things to then actually doing it myself, eating better and going, well, let's now talk to you about food. So um before we kind of move on to the food questions um so the it's the fukan academy isn't it yeah yeah uh, fukan academy that's my uh yeah that's my academy so um if people are interested in finding out sort of to take up free running or have never done it before um where can they find it and what are you kind of what would be your first kind of introductory session to someone who's completely brand new to it uh now uh things evolve in a very positive way you know uh, a long time ago, it wasn't very, very easy to have access to good quality coaching, you know, like, and people who can teach you again, you get good advice. I would say wherever start now, they can easily use uh, the powerful tool of internet to find a good uh, organization who teach and also, also people give you good advice. Because it's, it's all about having good advice, because uh, as you know, parkour is a very nice discipline, but it can be very dangerous. Okay, you can hurt yourself or even die. So it's very important to, to get to the right place. And there is now plenty of, uh, of good place to, to go. So for me, it's not, don't start to impress anyone. You know, if you start, you need to fall in love with it. You need to understand where you want to do it. Like, like for example, for you, you've been inspired and say, oh, now I want to know about this. So the idea is to, it's, it's like, a, um, it's an unknown uh, thing. And then after you, you search and you have, you looking for more knowledge to do it in a, in a nice way. And that's what I would say, but there is plenty of place. In my academy, we're uh, very oriented with the youth. Okay, it's very, uh, the core is a playful, playfulness. We do have adults, but it's very focused to the, to the young generation. So, but as you know, there is plenty of place where people can practice parkour and find also uh, uh, what they want. And even now, we've got, you've got a lot of uh, good tutorial online now. Like people can teach you the basics. You can literally, uh, and there is good one because there is a time where you look and say, oh, that's terrible. But now definitely you can see there is very good. I think, I'm, yeah, I think I can say there is a lot of great stuff now. Yeah, I know, like when, when we started, we were the fair and freestylers. Everyone had fun nicknames. Like mine was Mitch Lee Park or Flea. Um, <laughs> but everyone had like crazy nicknames. That doesn't seem to be the thing anymore. Like the progression to the athletes nowadays, they are athletes from day one they're training they're conditioning they're going to yeah. parkour parks and centers and it's amazing to see how the sport has evolved over the years um, i know when we started we saw what you guys did on telly and went 
let's just go down the local area and see what we can jump on climb had no idea what we were doing yeah it's oh, like the whole industry of um, as i said the gyms the classes the online resources youtube was only just kind of coming around then as well so again you would try and find a video and it was like a little animation or like yeah, yeah it's true. like it was um yeah it's amazing yeah. to see and obviously with you being there from pretty much day one the really early days and seeing where it's come now um it's absolutely incredible so it's a pleasure to speak with you thank you thank you very much um my pleasure with uh before again as we get onto the food side um with what's going on so firstly um lockdown coronavirus um the current climate how have you found that with your coaching your academy and your work outside of that Alors, in terms of business but as you can imagine everything stopped because uh, we're doing we're dealing with your children uh, parents so there is a lot of interaction especially with parkour uh, social distancing is it's just something that doesn't work for us um, and also we're touching a lot of obstacles so for us it's always like having our hands with the environment so uh, yeah everything completely stopped um, uh, but I say for me it's always like the idea the core philosophy of parkour is literally using an obstacles uh, using a, a wall and turning into a, a, a stepping stone so uh, the coronavirus was for me that's a good opportunity to reassess what I'm doing to try to find also different stream of revenue and to think about differently uh, to get better basically also give you rest give you time rest for the brain rest for the body um, time also to to train more <laughs> even we trained already a lot but it gives us time to to practice um, I respect the lockdown to a certain extent because also I'm an early uh, wake-up person so for me uh, I'm outside from 6 a.m. so for me at 6 a.m. there is nobody so I just go and if, if there is someone at 6 a.m. I will go at, at 5 so for me, I always find my way. So it's, this is this is what we do. For us, is find our way to to overcome the obstacle. But we are not designed to stay in the cube or a cage. We're designed to 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 move around and to to express ourselves. And uh, again, it can be very um, uh, how can I say that uh, uh, subject to debate. But for me, it's like. You know what, uh, we try to, to help other people. We try to be very sensitive, to wash our hands and everything, to not uh, spread the virus. But at some point, uh, we need to go outside. We cannot stay. So I think we've done quite good. We stay for a moment. But at some point, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not reasonable to stay in the place because people will have depression. We know about activity, how, what, how important activity is. So stay in one place, just for us as an adult, it's already something. But could you imagine for the kids in a pure development where all the hormones and stuff are, you say, you stay in this place? It's terrible, it's terrible. We cannot stay in one place. It's just, uh, we need to rethink our, our lifestyle. But for me, it's like I say, activity is vitality. We need to, we need to have fresh air. We need to, <laughs> this is it. And, uh, and I say, people may die and people already died. And uh, for me, it's just like, uh, yeah, it's true, but we need, we need, to, we need to leave. Yeah, we if you're staying leave. inside, you're not moving, you're more likely to have other health conditions. So it is getting that balance and it is getting outside, getting sunlight, yeah. eating right and yeah, yeah. Moving, essentially. So that's one thing that um, when we did our sort of training together um, for the ADAPT qualification, um, it's yeah. something that I'll never forget. We got absolutely beasted by um, the Parkour UK guys um, <laughs> and it was just your level of energy has always been exceptional. Um, if you don't mind um, answering, how old are you now? I'm, uh, I'm thinking 46. <laughs> I tried to answer very quickly. Yeah, just to, to show you how age is not important to me. Yeah, 46. Yeah, and the, the way your energy, your passion, your movement um, is m more amazing than some 18 year olds. Like it, it's always blown me away. <laughs> so moving on to food now, um, what does your kind of typical diet look like? Are you very fussy? Do you just kind of eat what's on hand? Or are you, no, nope, this is my set? I know. Uh, wow. I, I had pretty uh, a long journey. So I'm not vegan. Yeah. So I, I had a, a, a lot of, a lot of uh, journey. So I've been vegetarian. 
I've been vegan at some point. Uh, now I, I'm back to, I would say, what is an equilibrium? Because in this society, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like everything with food is very complicated. It's like, it has to be, I think it's still evolving and people need to study and we have a lot of, we need to have a lot of data and stuff like that. But uh, for me, it's like, uh, there is something for me, it's obvious is uh, we're in an uh, era where we've got a lot, we can easily go to extreme very, very easily in any ways. That's why there is a lot of type of diet and stuff like that. But for me, it's like uh, for people like eating, like for example, they're going to eat too much meat. For me, I'm not eating too much meat uh, because it's not normal. Like as I, I was uh, talking like this a long time, it's like, Eating meat in the morning, eating meat at midday, eating meat at night. There is, there is people that this. For me, it's like, it's, it's just, yeah. doesn't make sense. So eating more vegetables, very important. Because I used to eat vegetables, but not to the extent I'm eating now. Mm. So when I say it's equilibrium, it's vegetable, uh, less pasta now. This is where I am now. Uh, I'm going more to rice, uh, quinoa and all this stuff. So I try to understand which which ingredient, which, uh, which food is good for me because it's, very, it's always very important. I think for, for nutrition, what you need to understand is what is good for you. Yeah. And, uh, sometimes people completely forget that people, everyone wants, everyone does the same, but I don't believe in that. So for me, it's like, uh, how do I eat, um, uh, morning pretty, I think I switch a little bit to English breakfast. I mean, like, you know, in French, we're very, uh, uh, what would you say that? Savory? You know, like with sugar. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like the cheeses, the meats, the those kind of things. Yeah. So you have. Yeah, yeah. In in, in in French, we've got like croissant. We've got uh, uh, like everything is very with sugar, mm. and we don't have like kind of like uh, meat uh, or uh, what would you say that eggs or sorry for you because I'm saying that, but you know, but that's 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 uh, the English breakfast. They've got bacon, I think. Yeah, something like that. And in France, we've got try to you know. Uh, I must have the same in, in French. What is it? It's like you've got bread with uh, how do you say confiture? Um, jam. Uh, jam, yeah, yeah jam, French. butter. Uh, I don't know some cornflakes, which is terrible. Cornflakes is terrible. Uh, yeah, go on. Cereals and baguettes and all yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So. Uh, morning, I've got tea. Uh, I've got. I still have my biscuit. I still try to reduce a lot because uh, for me, as I say, it's too much of a. En français, we say farine. You know la farine? Yeah. Uh, farine is. Uh, damn it! Sorry, guys, for this one. Uh, farine is the thing you use to make bread or pizza. You know, like it's kind of like. A, a oh, like yeast or dough or something that rises. You know, it's a white stuff. You put water and, and you make and you make the bread. You know, it's a. <laughs> oh, is it like some sort of flour, like either semolina? Yeah, or... I think it's this. Yes. So yeah, there is. I think um, in the Caribbean, I had too much of that because it's how I grew up. A lot of bread, a lot of pasta, and stuff like that. But in terms of uh, nutrition, uh, nutritional value, it's not very big. So for me, it's a lot of fruit. A lot. Just to answer, because I go all over the place. For me, it's like fruit, vegetables. I do have meat. I never like eggs. I've never, my mom tried me to eat eggs. <laughs> I never, I hate it. Uh, except in, in cake. If you put bread in cake, it doesn't affect me. But if it's something else, it, I can't explain, it just, it just doesn't go. I'm not really with fish. It's not, it's not my thing. It's not that I can't, but it's not something I was looking for. Um, did I forget anything? If you're, I said, uh, yeah, go on. I was gonna say, if, if you're out for like a long day training, what are your kind of snacks on hand? So if, you're, if you know you're gonna be out, you're coaching lots, you need quick food, you need some Hello. energy. Okay. First of all, I have to say, I'm definitely not, for whoever is watching and listening, <laughs> I'm definitely not an example. Because I've still tried to find out uh what is good for me so i'm not the person who that's why if you look at from since a long time ago you've never seen me give any advice on food never mm. i never say this is what i do this is what you should do because for me it's just like okay 
it's so uh, uh, tricky and also dangerous. For me, it's like, it's, I better know what I'm doing before because you can say, okay, you to do a precision jump, you land your feet like this and so far. For food, for me, it's be careful. Everything you put in your system and the way you do, I think you need to be very careful. Um, I try, I try to get, uh, as I say, for me, uh, I don't have something fixed yet, you know. Uh, you're like, like for you, for example, you know more, you research more into it. Mm. For me, I'm still, uh, uh, now I move, so I'm in my place, I'm by myself because I'm, uh, I'm in a process of divorce. So, uh, so I'm in my own place. So I'm cooking myself. Yeah, I'm cooking. So, um, so you see, I'm still discovering what I like, what I don't like. So it's very hard. I think for me, food is, uh, to be honest with you, it's a very difficult subject. Uh, it's the first time, basically, I really, really talk about it. But normally, yeah. just like, I don't know. It's just like, uh, I'm from Caribbean. For us, it's rice, rice and peas. You call it rice and peas. Yeah. Right. rice and beans you yeah. know so i'm still have that uh, is that because it makes me strong or is that it's a cultural thing because it's since i'm young so something like that. i have no idea um as i say i know for sure i move away from uh, pasta because for me it's only uh, in nature you won't find pasta <laughs> Yeah. unless you make it i won't find pasta rice you can find rice if you if you but you can find rice yeah. so i move to rice um i've got my stuff for food for me it's like morning like a king midday like a prince and uh and night like a like a monk that's always my thing and i would say uh it rhymes better in french uh je sais um uh, yeah, comment je sais? <laughs> i forgot uh, no, it doesn't rhyme. It's just, I say, le soir, c'est vert. That means the night is green. Mm. So it doesn't have to be green, green, but it's just something for me to remember. So it doesn't matter if I don't eat anything green in the morning. It doesn't matter if I don't eat green. Uh, it's not a big deal, but the uh, uh, evening, it has to it need to have green. But now I've got green almost all the time, but as a rules because some people eat they 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 don't like green it's just like i know this is people just like oh i just want pizza i want fries yeah. i want and uh and and i was i was guilty of that for a long time uh i couldn't find anything nice about a uh, vegetable to be honest mm. like literally compared to because i'm at my I, as a taste i'm a savory you see savory yeah, yeah. So for me, everything sugar. You show me sweet. Oh, I want it. I want it. Chocolate. Oh, I want it. So I had to go to a phase to... Also, I had some health issue or so. So for me, it's like... Uh, and also, the basically, I had something in my eyes, which is a color... Uh, oh, very hard to say it in English. Capillary... It's like capillary. Occlusion. Uh, vein vein occlusion, you know. Yeah. So I had this in my eyes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they treat it pretty seriously because if it's the, there is a difference between the the vein and artery, and it's it's almost like when you have a stroke. Um, okay. But did I just wake up and I couldn't see with this eyes? So I was just like, wow, what's happened? So I went to see the doctor and let's make a battery of a test and everything. They were surprised, like. They say, oh, uh, how is your diet? Uh, do you smoke? Uh, do you do some activity? Like a lot of stuff. I said, I thought I'd take all the good box, you know, like yeah. <laughs> I thought it was good. However, just to, to be short, sure, they never really tell me what I've got. They never find out. So it makes me rethink everything I was doing. And uh, I decide to go back to what is it to me, a normality. So I'm not doing any test of anything. I just like, if I do a lot of activity, I'm eating enough that I've got enough for my body to be to function properly. That's what I do, uh, and uh, knowing everything, everything available basically, everything is available. Uh, did I answer to your question? Yeah. When um, when you say about like something green, are you talking about like broccoli or spinach or kale or just basically even tomato? Even, even tomato. Like I say green as a green, but it, it can be it can be yellow, red. Uh, green and stuff like that. But for me, so when I say green, I mean veg vegetable. But it's just like, okay. And also one thing I changed, I call it a vegetable medic. 
So, because it helped me to, to understand why I'm eating them. It's not just, it doesn't work if someone says, no, but it's nice and it's sweet. We can make, when you could, you can make it nice. But for me, to pass the threshold, I made in my head, like I said, this is medic. This is literally the, the best medic you can ever have for your body. So you must, for the day, you must have, you need to take your pills, basically. I said pills, but it's not pills, you know what I mean. Yeah. But you need to have every single day this. And since that moment, I was, I was okay with, I can eat anything, like bro bro broccoli, you name them. Like I can literally, almost all of them, I can eat them because I completely include in me that it's not food just for pleasure, especially those one, they are my medic. So they will do, because the, in the hospital, they didn't find out what I've got. They didn't, still to this day, they, did, they almost like don't call me back. They didn't tell me what I've got. They wanted to give me like, I don't know, like something like a cool, like statin and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I should have said that. Don't do that. <laughs> because I, I'm, I'm not taking that. I'm taking none of that. Yeah. I just don't care. I'm not taking any of that. It's so that for me, it's, it's food, yeah. let, let food be thy medicine. Um, so it's, yeah. it's exactly that. So it's, it's amazing to hear like that you're kind of intuitively now focusing on that because it's always a, a tip when, when you're looking to tell someone like, oh, how can I eat healthier or how can I kind of function better? If you go less refined and just start with whole food, like plant-based obviously great, but um, even if you are sort of eating meats and stuff, just up your fruits, vegetables, and even just water intake. That's a great start for any diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's also, I don't really like the word diet. I they should find another word. Yeah. But for me, it's like, it's like, don't be an extreme. That's something, it's like, uh, as I say, those people who go for fast food, uh, <laughs> fast, food is, fast food is horrible. But someone who goes, it's already, it's not good already. But yeah. if someone goes to fast food, every day <laughs> it's just terrible it's just like but it's a lack of understanding and knowledge like people think oh yeah if anything happened to my body i fix it i change my my way of eating no it doesn't work like that because it's you accumulate yeah. accumulate 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 and when you want to reverse uh you need, to, you need the same time to accumulate to, to to clear it and i think that's the message i've got with my eyes because still now with my eyes there is a tiny portion of my eyes when I can't see properly yeah. um, and and basically it's almost like like a car said whatever you did it doesn't matter it's not about feeling guilty stuff like whatever I, I did in the past break my vehicle my body in a way like it's irreversible so now for me the lesson is like, okay that, that's enough now okay I got it let's be let's try as much as possible to 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 not be like I say, if I do, a bit, because there is some time where I wasn't really keen on food. So for me, so I'm not angry. But however, if you practice three hours per day or four hours per day, you need to, you need to uh, compensate. You need to bring back what you just mm -hmm. take off. And this concept was a way for me. I, I didn't, I don't know. It wasn't really clear in my head until I've got that. I say, okay, each time is good to practice, but you need whatever you do, you need to to counterbalance and to give it back. So if you, are, you think you're a high level athlete, you need to have a high level uh, uh, diet, whatever you call it, at the yeah. highest level, you must. It's not just, like, oh yeah, I can do this jump, I can jump all over the place. Yeah, but you cannot, you cannot eat crap. Sorry to say that, you cannot. And you must take your medic. That's for me, it's just like, that's why I say to my daughter, because she doesn't like vegetable. I say, I know, but if, I have to, if you have to choose between pills and stuff like that, which has no taste, and sometimes they put something in it to make it tasty, compared to vegetables, maybe vegetables are not uh, tasty as much as uh, she would love to, but compared to any medic you will find in the pharmacy, it's just already, woo, it's the top, it's the top. So for me, it's like, take them now, because after, if you, it's like, a, yeah, after it's like you have to pay this because if it's like a debt, you see, if you don't do it now, you'll be forced to take stuff like you absolutely ate, like whatever syrup or pills, whatever they will come up with. You will say, what is that? You have to, because this is like, same with chemotherapy, you know, chemotherapy is like, it's, it's terrible, you know, but it saves, it saves people. There is also a lot of controversy because in the because same time it brings you more cancer because it develops all stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm not an expert, however I heard it. But for me, it's more like the idea of like, do it now, don't wait. 
because after you will you will have to go an extreme way to wash it out <laughs> it's like so it's like try as much as possible to yeah to to be yeah. mindful voila. that's all i can say it's, treat, it's treating the cause not the problem it's like when, if someone is overweight and wants to lose weight you don't suddenly go right what's the crash diet what's the pill i can take it's actually what has put you in the situation where you are overweight is it what you're eating is it lack of exercise is it these kind of things so it's it's understanding as well that like you said the amount of time that's taken to build up to where your weight has gained it's going to take the same time to take it off it's not yeah. an overnight like done um and that's yeah. one thing like we're with the whole plant-based vegan side as well we we don't go around preaching it we just make whole food plant-based food um i think three quarters of our customers aren't even vegan it's just it's convenient healthy unlike a ready meal it's a healthy ready meal hand cooked with no preservatives so that's the whole point of what we've done is people are busy people are short on time and sometimes people don't know what to cook or just go yeah, oh, yeah. To cook. so by having that healthy convenient thing that's exactly why we've done it so yeah we're very much aligned in terms of how food yeah. sits so um, it's good because it's true it's it's a very big problem also this idea because now i'm cooking now it's become easier and easier but i can tell you there is no, not so long ago it was like oh my god you know, it's not, it's not like something you have naturally. Some people has it. Maybe it's a, it's a education. They got it from their parents, but some people, they don't, they probably has a, as an education, a very poor to start a very poor one. So they correct the, Oh, it's better than my parents, but it's still not good. So, and after to have the time also to cook for you and to do things like that and to really understand like, uh, making food or so it's a, it's a, it's a celebration. It's, it's not, it's not something like, it's something you can take your time for. It's like something, it's not like, oh, quick, quick, I put it in my, like, I take this and I'm leaving. No, it's like, hey, like, this is important because it's like, it's like the car. When you get, take the car and you put the, you need to, you cannot quick, you need to, okay, put the petrol nice and easy, take my time. Okay. And then at this point, it's a poor analogy because petrol is completely not, but however, this is it. The vehicle needs something to function. And for me, this is, this is how I do uh talking about but now that's the food but also for me my fuel also come from passion yes i know that we talk about energy and um for me it's like uh from the beginning it's always i've been a passionate person for me it's always about passion uh the idea of not taking too seriously because i always say the child are the master the children are the master and uh and when we enter to the this society we put everything very serious and life is serious the society we created is like it's like a box and uh and thankfully with parkour we managed to do something away from that mm. which tried because uh, again now there's different way of practicing parkour but yeah we try to do something different but that's what i try to convey i would say that for me from uh from passion okay come uh consistency and from consistency will come results and uh, that's always for me the the mantra. It's like, uh, and the energy goes from it. It's like I say, uh, children. If you if you kick, if you take a child, you say, okay, we're gonna run around this block. Uh, if we do a few laps. They're gonna be bored, okay. But if we turn into a game, that will do all day. And then when we say now it's finished, it's time to go home. They say no, we want to keep on doing it. So obviously they tap in a different energy source, and that's the thing I'm very interested in. Like. What is the uh, energy source when we play? What is the energy source when we s create a set of pattern and move and stuff like that? And mm -hmm. I think I've always been like that and I always function like that, uh, no matter what I do, uh, uh, like uh, World Chase Tag, all, all the stuff I do, people say, oh, it's competition. But yeah, if, I'm do if you see me the way I'm doing it, I'm in a playground. Yeah. So this is the energy. But if you turn it into like a, the traditional competition, which is very serious, I cut from my source. So now I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Same with Ninja Warrior. I can do it because I see the fun game. Ah, yes, they give me the key. Now I can do whatever I want. It works. If it's now, now you do it for your country, Seb and stuff like that. It just doesn't work. It's just like, just boring. Going um, back to the, the childhood kind of analogy as well. Um, when you were young, was there any particular foods or uh, meals that you grew up with that you still make to this day? Or is there any that you go, oh, I remember eating that when I was young and I haven't had that in years? Rice and bean, ri rice and peas. Yeah. This is the one I, I'm, I'm doing now. Uh, I'm still doing uh, what I do, um, um, uh, vegan boeuf bourguignon. Yeah. Yeah. 
because I, I, I used to do this one and I still like it, so I'm still taking it. So I think for me, the beauty also for being vegan, it, it gives me an alternative so I can compensate with the conditioning because we are conditioned because there is a big industry with meat. And uh, if you're not careful, they will feed you with so much meat that will probably create a disease. I don't know, but you know, like I say, I'm not an expert, but I'm not stupid. I know there is an industry and they need to give you what they want. So for me, there is a few uh, uh, meal uh, I know how to do and uh, from, from a vegan, like from a vegan, and I'm still doing it. I'm still, uh, and also I, I use my daughter to, to, for testing because my youngest one, she's not vegetarian or vegan, but the oldest one, she's, uh, she's vegetarian. So, uh, so I'm testing my thing with them to see if, uh, if they like it. Because uh, trust me, if, uh, especially French, you know, Boeuf Bourguignon. Yeah. So if you do, if you do a vegan Boeuf Bourguignon and they like it, you nailed it. You, this is this. It's you, pretty straightforward. Some sort of like meat alternative? Or, yeah. Mushroom. Yeah. Bourguignon is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Are you? Okay. Yeah. See. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> there is one thing also I was very, very surprised. As I said, I don't want to do a... Uh, I tried to move away definitely from pasta because I, I made my mind now. I will try as, as much as I can. But I went in Arsenal Football Club once to do a speaking over there. And, uh, and at, at, that, at that time I was vegan. And they had like a spaghetti bolognese. And the guy said, no, that's the vegan spaghetti bolognese. And I didn't believe him. <laughs> Trust me, I did. I was, I was like this, I was like, really? Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's a serious uh, environment. So what they do is for the player and everything, they're not treated. But it was so good. Like, I, I was thinking like the guy was just, he's just playing with me. So I, I was like, wow. And still this day, I don't know how he made it. Yeah. But it was good. <laughs> it was good. It was like, whoa. Because you can do, really you do like meaty textures like with mushroom mints and like lentils and those things, but there is yeah. so many like meat alternatives. Like there's obviously corn, which is its own thing, and then you have the soy proteins and the soy minces and things. But um, yeah, like we, whenever we kind of have a meat, it's something like a tempeh or tofu or lentil. Like it's it's again using those whole natural foods. Um, but the meat, yeah. the, the meat alternatives are getting incredible now. Like things like the. Um, Beyond Meat Burgers, the Impossible Burgers, you would not know the difference. Like they are so yeah. meaty. They the technology behind a burger. It's that's where it's kind of getting this crossover. That's just a bit crazy. So yeah, a, but I think it, it's really good because as I say give an alternative to uh, the idea of too much. I, and I can spot very quickly when it's too much. Like it's just like what well, you just. I I keep it for me because I say for me. Like, I know food is very sensitive subject. Uh, for people because so, uh, for some people it's linked with culture it's yeah. not even like they like it it's, but they, they won't admit it but sometimes it's linked with culture let's say like I recreate something let's say all my youth uh, the meeting with my family was to do a barbecue some, something with a particular thing it's just like the smell the, the, the memories of what they've done is, it, attached to this is very, very powerful. So for me, always like, but I can spot when sometimes it's too much. Like I say, like, why, why are we eating that? Like sometimes I say, I said, we're going to do this and they're going to eat. And I, I'm just watching, why we have like so much, like, for example, Christmas, I, I don't like, it's mm -hmm. too much. It's just like Christmas, which one is the one? Halloween, terrible. It's sorry sweet. for those who like that. So, sorry for those who like Halloween. But when you know about the what we call dead sugar and what it does for the body, and I will raise when you really know, it's like, guys, enough now. We know, we know, we're not like we know. How is it possible we can promote this money? It's like, it's, and you give it to your children. It's like, oh, whoa. It's, you see, it's all this stuff. I try to, as I said, I don't want to, to preach and be like this, but. I'm now I'm aware. So for me, it's like, oh, Seb, you're not doing it. Oh, you're not fun. You're not fun. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not fun. But at the end, it's like karma. I don't want to accumulate in my karma stuff. So because after you have to undo, you have to undo, and uh, and it's it's terrible. Is there a particular meal or smell or something that will bring back memories of a place, a time, somewhere you've been and had an amazing experience that if you think about it, you go, oh. Pad Thai. Yeah. Pad Thai in Thailand. That's always, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, pad Thai in Thailand. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. After I, I, I can say also the Caribbean food, but the one like off my culture is pad Thai in Thailand. When I was in Thailand, because I have very good, very good moments, and uh, it was just amazing. <laughs> it was just like each time, I said, oh my god, I wish I go back there. It was so good. Was very, it very. Good. You on holiday yeah. or was it work or? Yeah. No holiday. Yeah. With David Bell and all the guys. <laughs> I remember. So, do you was, think it was the people and the environment, or was it just being in the moment with like where you were? Like, what made that moment stick in your mind so much? I think it's a bit of everything. People were nice. Uh, where were we? We were in uh, Chiang Mai. No, 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 no. It's not Chiang Mai. We were in. Oh, that was beautiful. I forgot. By the beach, it was. So like Phuket or no, no, it's not Phuket. One of the one of the islands. Maybe yeah, I think it's Phuket. Yeah, I think it's Phuket. Yes, I think it's Phuket. Yeah, that was yeah, I forgot. But we we travel quite a lot around. But yeah, all I remember is like the sand, very very warm sand, and then you look at you look at the beach and the landscape is just like everything you can find in your laptop, you know, when they got the beautiful, beautiful, like, <laughs> pictures. It's just like, whoa. And it, because also I'm an early wake up, so it's, it was very quiet, very relaxing and stuff like that. So the whole experience, like you with your flip flop, you just come nice and easy. Like you don't, you're not in a hurry and everything. And then you just, okay, guys, should we have food? Yeah, and then we just sit down and, and they take the time to, to make food, you know? You can hear like, shh. You know, like everything, everything is like slow down. There is no hurry, no hurry. And uh, yeah, that's something I still remember. It's amazing. Yeah, Thailand, I think that one of the nice things is like no one really has kitchens in Thailand. Like everyone eats the street food. So the vendors, they make yeah. it fresh. They make it in minutes. So Pad Thai is literally, yeah, chuck it in a pan, fry it around. Yeah, you see yeah. it. You see yeah. it. It's like, it's the excitement. I think that's, that's why I wanted to start this whole series is we, we all have so much passion around food whether we realize it or not there'll be moments in your life that kind of stand out and you go oh yeah like I remember when we were there and you can close your eyes and be like I'm there right now so food is something that some people just go no it's a fuel source I would have a pill instead of food if I could and um, that's some people's way of doing it whereas for me like everything has to like taste good smell good feel good like it, yeah. it there's so much around it that yeah food is passion for me so that's yeah. uh, good yeah I say like once you reach this level, so where where you it's easy to do, it's easy to you know you go you know your ingredient, everything is there. It's way easier. Like for example, now this is my kitchen, so there is as I say like dead sugar is a no no. There is a lot of stuff like for me um, before like when you when you're living in a family, you've got like children like oh but I want this, I want that. So you see everyone can uh, want something. So sometimes it's in front of you. And it's not your thing, but someone wants it, so you don't want to be like, no, 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 no. So, uh, so it was pre it's pretty particular. Even when you go to friends and family, you can see you, because this is their habit. So you come, you coming in, so okay, they're eating this. I'm not eating that. Yeah, but when you're in your place, it's for me. It's almost like a safe zone because it's like this is where I can uh, refuel myself, recharge myself. It's not finished. Like I said, I still have to learn a lot about cooking. Um, my girlfriend was laughing about me because uh, when I say to her, I call it the nourish room. You know, so I don't call it the kitchen. I, sometimes I say kitchen because I'm used to, but I call it the nourish room. I say, ah, oh, nourish room, uh, you're not even cooking. You're not, you're just, because I was just like uh, doing pasta and just like, uh, that's it. But I'm not really cooking, like cutting stuff. And I said, you can still love, but it's gonna happen. And now it's happening. She said, oh my God, you're doing it. Say, I told you it's gonna happen. You know, like uh, cutting everything, onion and stuff like that, and carrot and stuff like that green bean i do my thing i said oh that's tasty it's really good how did you do that i said i don't know i just had this i mixed with this i did that and then that's it and i just tested oh that's good i like it so uh, so i'm i'm a very very early stage of of this but still yet i think i won't talk much about food i can like i say i can talk with you about this but i i don't think i will give uh, any advice to people yeah. to to my thing maybe if I don't know. We don't know how long we live, but maybe I'm uh, 90 years old and I still have my, my head and I can make joke and I can, I can laugh and I can still walk and do a little bit of parkour, you know, 
maybe I can explain my diet if, if there is something people can take out of it. But so far, I feel like, you know what, let's keep on doing it. Uh, I'm quite happy with the non-extreme uh, mindset to make sure you got your medic every day, every day. Like literally, for me, it's like I say, uh, if people know about the story with my eyes, it's just like, uh, uh, it was in my bubble, but for me, it's like, uh, I made my decision, I made my point. You cannot do big physical activity without give it back to your body. It's a disrespect for your body. You cannot uh, eat uh, crap all the time. Uh, not normally not eat crap at all, but if like, I don't know, once every two months you've got something is not that good, your body will, will clean it because the body is, is well designed. But it's like, it's like a wave. If too much, it won't be able to clean it because you just, you just put too much garbage so too much garbage after the system is like, oh, hold on now, we, we're overwhelmed. You put too much crap. So now, sorry, we, we won't clean you. And, uh, and that's why. But, you know, there is plenty of stuff like, uh, how do you call this? Uh, le jeune, c'est... It's not starving. No. Do you know when you stop uh, eating for a moment? Fasting? Yeah. So there is people who does this and it's yeah. been proven like... It can, so, you see, I'm aware of all this stuff. And for me, it's oh, interesting. And we know that. But again, some people will compensate and try to fight that because for, at the end, you always see it's always money. Mm. <laughs> Pharmacy, if they say something, there is, there is a health. I'm, I'm really thinking about health, but there is also a strong idea about money. Food, if you think about uh, uh, meat, money. It's like there is country, you can, how it's designed, it's money. You think about, for example, in, uh, in UK, because I'm living in UK, just the idea of alcohol, alcoholism, mm. I don't think they will tackle the problem. No. Too much money, too, too much of a cultural attachment, they won't tackle it. But for me, I can see, it's like, my God, that's crazy. So, whoa, that's seriously? Literally bring it back to right now with lockdown, they're, they're opening the pubs before the gyms. And like, I've seen a few kind of arguments for like in a gym, you're heavy breathing, there's more of the moisture particles around and all this, but it's to do with the economy 100%. Like they're going to earn more money off the back of pubs and restaurants and places being open because that's what we do as British. We go out, we have food, we have drinks. That's how we socialize. It's link. It's, it, and as I say, I'm not judging anyone. I understand. I, abs I absolutely understand. I don't say I agree I would do exactly the same. It's just I got it. I know why it's very difficult. It's been, it's been in your culture. You cannot, undo, it's like, it's hard. Undo the culture. It's like, whoa. Someone's saying like, okay, now we're going to shut it down the Eiffel Tower. And so, what? No way. <laughs> See, it's, this is it. And for uh, food, there is a lot like this. It's not, sometimes there is a lot of debate to what is right, what is good. But for me, it's like, there is another thing very important is the cultural aspect and the, the sentimental aspect when you attach very deeply. And uh, UK is a very good example with alcohol. It's like, for me, it's like, whoa. How many people I know, like, they put stuff on Instagram, I can see it, it's like, oh my God, again, they're drinking. Oh, they're drinking again. They've got this game also with the, you know, I'm, not, I'm really poor, I'm really bad with that. It's like you've got a glass of beer, like all together over there, and then you've got a ping pong ball, something, yeah. and you ping pong, yeah, kind of stuff like that. And then we go, oh yeah, that's fun, let's do that. I was watching that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> so I was, last time we had this in, uh, in the school, uh, you know, when the school is finished, so they're all the parents and teachers and so on. So they were doing this game. I wanted to play, but I don't know what to drink. So I said, okay, okay. And then my friend said, okay, I drink for you, Seb. I said, okay, great. And then I could play, but I couldn't, for me, the idea of doing this and just missing, and for me, no, I don't find it funny. It's just like, sorry. And, uh, and now I say I'm 46, and uh, uh, être duré is very important for us. It's like, uh, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not the story of how far you're going to go, it's how long you're going to go. And uh, do you, for me, it's like, do you enjoy being, having your brain like this? Do you enjoy to be able to breathe, to be able to run, to be able to, to swim? To... I love movement so, so badly, not to an extent of showing off, to an extent like uh, I'm happy. Like Even like now, when people say, oh my God, he's 46, he's doing this. There is a bit of pride. I need to be careful with the ego. But however, for me, it's like, uh, yeah, that's, 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 my, that's my task. I'm not trying to, even like physically, I feel like... 100% I can do a lot of stuff, but I'm mature enough to not try to push the envelope 
which is, you know, like when you're young, you want to push the envelope. I'm not interested in that at all. It's just like I go in the morning, I go in my tree, climbing the trees. I do my running beat, my precision here, my stuff like a bit of balance footwork. My normal routine, boom. As I say, it's like when you ride a bicycle. You're not trying to do like, uh, how do you call when you go with the, the, the wheel? Yeah, really. Yeah. You, when you were young, you tried to do a lot of stuff like that. But once you become an adult, you say, okay, the, the old task was to be able to ride. Now you ride, you say, oh, I need to go to this place. I go to this place. I go to that place. And that's it. You can even ride without your hands. It's still okay. It's not a big, big task. Okay. But, and you know, like we can, human being, we can push further. Like, uh, I don't know if you know a guy called Danny McCaskill. Yeah, yeah. You see, you see, you see the level. It's amazing. You see, but that's how far we can go. But for me, it's like the way I see my practice. Uh, it's like this. It's just like I just want to ride. I just want to ride as long as possible, mm -hmm. and I'm very happy with that because for me, I'm already above average. Even now, I go outside, so like, pff, I can't point anywhere. So they can't do what I'm doing. They can't do. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm not pushing compared to parkour athletes that we say, oh, it's not that good. But as a human being, he is good. So and that's, that's, that's where you become more mature. Yeah, I think you're like, you've done it almost your whole life. So from a very young age, you've been developing yeah. these movement skills, this mindset, this kind of whole vision towards how you overcome obstacles and, and move in general. Um, and that's the one thing that blew me away when we were training. It was just, you could see how much joy you get out of movement as well as knowing your body enough to be like, oh no, I can't make that, or I'm feeling tired now, I'm not, no, I'm not keeping on doing this exercise, this is stupid, like, it's yeah. really being in tune with your body, and that's something that I think, when you're young, ambitious, you want to keep progressing and go, oh no, yeah, pain is, pain is weakness leaving the body, it's all this stuff, it gets to a point where you're like, no, actually, I probably should calm down a bit, like, I'm, I'm yeah, only strong now, but I'm like, I know, even when I was sort of like 16, 17, 18, I could be out there for, like the whole day like not really eat anything just drink water like whatever it was whereas <laughs> now i'm like got to warm up properly got to cool down properly like make sure i'm eating properly like it's a completely yeah. different ball game you know have you heard about the blue zone yes yeah 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 so you see for me it's like all this stuff i'm 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 very uh keen and i'm looking all this stuff so uh and i try to follow so, okay you need to be this because they're for me they're the top athletes like for me, it's like, it's not like those we see like on the, on the television, they're like 20s or something like that. For me, it's like, forget that. That's for the low level. The highest level, you understand, like in the blue zone, they're the Olympian, they are there. The people with like 90 and they're still running and doing this stuff, bicycles, like, whoa. And they still talk to you like, they keep joking. Ah, I remember uh, it was in, uh, da, 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 there is this happened. So, that. so memory is still up. Like, mem like, can remember a lot of stuff. They can, they're very sharp, and the body is like, is a good function. For me, it's like, wow, that's a proper uh, prowse. You know, you yeah. call it like this. Yeah, for me, it's like, it's amazing. It's like when you see a turtle. You know, when you see a, a turtle, like uh, a tortoise or turtle. Yeah. I don't know which one is the one with, in the water, but both of them. For me, it's just like, uh, guys, it's not, it's not, it's not like, it's, it's an amazing feat right in front of our face. Because when you see the journey to get to this size, when they, as an eggs, they're like everything being eaten as an eggs. Then eggs open, they need to cross the beach and they'll be eating by anything who can there's the bird, the anything. Then you, you enter in the water, all the fish want, want to eat you, everything, you try to eat. Then you become a little bit bigger. So now you can hide yourself, they can see you. So now they can eat you even more. You've got people who fish and then tag them and then you go in the net and you can, so when you see one, like, you know, like what I mean, like the four, four yeah. limbs, like, yeah, your a proper one for me is like, oh, I would love to see with the camera a time lapse the whole journey mm -hmm. because it's a proper like it's amazing. So like, how did you? Because how long how long does it leave these things? Like it's I think hundred years. Like sometimes. Did you really? <laughs> uh, like hundred years. The land tortoises, I think, in particular, you can get them up to sort of like nine years old. So you so you see my point. Like when you see one, it's like almost I oh, yeah, but it's only eighty years, it's, guys. <laughs> <laughs> 80 years in a wildlife is not it's not 80 years in London <laughs> it's like it's not the same task it's 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 different 
And uh, that's why I try to, in my bubble, is to really get like very focused on what, what's matter, the energy. Like I said, I call it like being educated in energy to understand like what goes up goes low and all the stuff. Like if you spend your energy, you need to regain. Okay, sometimes you need to learn to slow down and everything. So all this stuff need to be, uh, to be understood. This, we take a lot of energy from the sun. So once you understand that, I say, oh, it's sunny. I need to go out, outside. So no, no, I'm, uh, I stay inside. No, 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 no. You must. It's not, it's not just like asking. If someone is in a place where like a third world, like when you've got sun all the time, it's okay. You can be in the shade. But a place like in UK, people with my color, with my melanin, who stop, like who prevent me, like it's slower to get everything you need to go outside and take as much as you want because when we're going to have the rain and stuff like that, you're going to miss it. And that stuff is very linked with health. You know, we can talk about food, good food, but everything is linked. If I don't have that, how do I compensate? People say, oh, yeah, take vitamin. Yeah, I can, but there is also some stuff you can take naturally. So when you have it, you, you need to take it. Uh, oxygen, like if, if you have an animal, dog, a cat. Cat, yeah. You have a cat. Cat can't stay in the house all the time. This was linked with the coronavirus the same. Look at the cat. Then they need to go outside. <laughs> they go there. At some point, they're going to go out. Like, yeah. You see? And they're connected more than us. For me, it's like, this is the master. Look at the master. Children are the master. Animals are the master. Look at them. Look how they do. And I believe we're, we're closer to something like, uh, uh, because we're so disconnected. We're far away from the old tribe where they have the elderly who explain and stuff like that, where they take plants from the roots and say, this is the one, it, the, the, blah, blah, blah. We've got like, pfft, everything is just like disappear. I don't know, it's just like, then we, still, we can still find a little bit. Now everyone with uh, ayahuasca, <laughs> people think this is the only thing. This is ayahuasca, woo! We say, well, okay, hold on, there is all the stuff. <laughs> but, but same, it's true. There is so much we don't know. And sometimes I feel like I wish I can, I always like want to find the, it's like, I started like, it's find the right master. Because the, uh, talking like quickly, like ayahuasca, I'll be afraid to try ayahuasca because I know now it's, a, it's going to be a business. Yeah. <laughs> so many want it. So I'm not stupid. I say, okay, someone's going to, yeah, take it. But okay, it's hundred pounds. Uh, I'm not even sure it's going to be the real one. Nobody knows. So see, so for me, it's like, okay, okay, hold on. So I would love to have like someone like, from family or true friend who ask you nothing and show you, no, 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 this is how it's done properly. Mm. Parkour for me, it's almost the same. A lot of people practice parkour, but I think now they disconnect from the roots, you know, uh, like for example, I'm talking, yeah, go on. I share the um, natural method or method natural um, stuff the other day. And again, like George Herbert and all this stuff. Like yeah. That. When I started yeah. parkour, I knew the whole history and all this. Whereas like nowadays, I'm sure there'll be some names like, like maybe even your name to certain people, they'd be like, oh, who's that? Like, that's not. That's yeah, they, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. And, but so it's for me, it's not so important about knowing my name and put me in a pedestal saying he's the guy who did Jump London. It's more like people need to understand the journey. You know, when you talk about the, the talk to us or the talk, turtle, yeah. it's like, wherever you've been, guys, wherever you're thinking, I've been there. So you are, you've got in front of you a data or history of, like a lot of history. All the founders are still alive, touch wood, but they've got history. So normally you can ask questions like, how is your back? How is your knees? Yeah. How do you feel? Do you lose motivation? How do you keep, but people don't ask because so focused on doing their corkscrew or, or doing their gainers <laughs> and stuff like that. And, and to look at the, the, the new superstar, like, okay, this is the guy, this is my guy. When I started, I saw him, but they don't understand this guy is still young. Even they say like, I don't know, if you say he's 30, uh, 30 is quite a good journey. If you started like by 15 and you're 30, it's a very good journey. Mm -hmm. But now it's like the stars is 20, he's 23. It's the guy I look up to, but it's normal. But for me, it's like, like everything, don't forget the roots because uh, it's very valuable. For me, I do the same for what I do. I'm looking for a martial art. I'm looking for, if we talk about food, are we looking for like, if it's a old ladies and she's like 90, something like she talked to me, I'll be like, where's she talking? You know, because I'll be very careful what she's saying because she's a survivor. Uh, of course, there is also the DNA aspect, yeah. <laughs> something we need to, very important. Sometimes it's just like, 
she's been eating crap all day, all time, and now she's she's 98. Doesn't mean like you all have to do uh, eating uh, stuff. Uh, for me, it's more like have you heard about Ayurveda? Yeah. Ayurveda, you see, so you've got different type. Okay, that for me, so, mm, I I believe in that. You know, there is an idea of I believe in that. The idea of like everyone have, has a type. Okay. Yeah. Even like you need to do good research to know which type you are. It's like blood because I know we see because it's linked with stuff I know already. So hey, we've got different type of blood. We've got different type. We've got different morphology, ectomorph, mesomorph. You know. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like it's right in front of our face, literally right in front of our face. We are different guys. Fast twitch, slow twitch. You know, it's different. So for me, it's like mm, my question is, who am I? Yeah. What is mine? You see. Once I read of my ego. Once I'm listening, who am I? Because as I said to you, my mom wants me, to, and I really want me to eat eggs. And I'm sure she, she means very well for that. But I can't explain. Maybe someone will study, say, obviously, it's metabolism doesn't like eggs because that's why not. It's not, because there is stuff I didn't like, like food. So, oh, no, I don't like, I don't like the taste. Eggs was different. It was literally, I felt like my body rejected it. Literally, it's like uh, I feel like I want to vomit. It's like literally very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. And as I say, still these days, it's like, <laughs> it's like, nope. And I say to my mom, I was right. <laughs> I was right from the beginning. You did try, but I was right. Yeah. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. I don't know why. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, th- yeah, there is so much to study. Uh, there is something also with radish. You know radish? Yeah. Uh, I don't know why, but radish, uh, I can't explain. There is something particular when I eat radish. Like it goes to my, yeah. to my, uh, I, 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 this is something I cannot explain. It's like a, a nice feeling. It's not the nicest taste and the nicest food that I've ever had. But this particular thing, when I, when I get it, my God, it's impossible to explain. It does something to me, like instant like in, as an instant, like like something like, oh, like I, I can't explain. I wish there was a scientist to say, okay, we're gonna put some stuff. We understand what's going on. And for me, it's almost the opposite of, of eggs. Completely the opposite. That's good. You see, it's it's completely the opposite. When when uh, uh, my girlfriend bring bring, bring radish, I hey, bring radish for you because I talked to her about this, and she look at me, and I'm like, okay, here you go, it's coming, and I do this, and every single time he does it. There is not one time he doesn't do that. And I, I've got no explanation for that. Absolutely not. That's, that's normally sugar for most people. Right? You eat sugar and you're like, Whoo! But Yeah, but this one, I, I don't know. It's like, I, I just don't know. It's a very tricky thing. I absolutely love it. And I know it's like something. It's just, <laughs> it's funny because I can't explain. <laughs> that's amazing. I've never, never had that reaction to radish before. So that's... Yeah, the, the, <laughs> Yeah, like I say, my girlfriend loves just laugh when she saw me. This I say, I'm I'm not joking. It does something, and uh, and that's my conviction with with food and everything. It's like we should be very. It's more complicated than just uh, we go to school. You go to the canteen. They give you food. <laughs> they just give you. This is a menu, guys. <laughs> Take it. It's like for me. It's like uh, of course there is tribe where okay, this is what we've got, so we we eat this. But I think in the highest level. I think everyone, uh, your metabolism has got the perfect, like there is a meal is perfect for you. Like a, like a computer with a program. Okay, for this particular computer, this is the program's need for this perfect computer. And it's gonna run like perfect. And as, I believe that's why some people say, oh yeah, I took this and this completely cured me from the cancer. And some people say, okay, I'm not taking this. I'm gonna take exactly what she took and it's gonna cure me. It didn't cure them. Mm. And for me, it's like it's, there is a mental aspect, but there is also something where I think the body has to. It's like this is what your body needs. Uh, I don't know if you heard about uh, Jordan Peterson. I know the name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his daughter had a very, very difficult health condition, like for a long time. Okay, uh, maybe if you type, you're looking for. And basically, what they do, they're eating meat. Only meat. <laughs> it's completely like carnival diet, isn't it? Have you, uh, yeah. yeah. So he explained the story of his daughter and what, uh, how did she find, how did she cure herself from, uh, from the stuff she had? 
and it's from from the from only eating meat. And then Jordan Peterson, he's got something with his skin and stuff like that. He's, he, he did the same, and this stuff cure him also. So for me, in my head's like some people will jump straight away eating meat. <laughs> for me, it's like no, I heard it. I heard it. I'm not. I'm not even like say it's not true or not. But I'm not jumping into it because it's a, for me. It's like, in my head, it's like it's a body type. Maybe it does something for her, but it doesn't mean because it does something for her, that's going to do something for me. Yeah. And that's why for me, it's like, I would love like people like to really get more into understanding why, like why, why she had all this stuff, like the bone. I think, yeah, if you go, I think it's maybe in Jorogan and stuff like that. Yeah. And she explained about this, you will see. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Because she, she was living hell, basically. Absolutely living hell. She had no, it's terrible, it's terrible. And I'm happy for her. She finds something. But I was thinking, I'm sure there's plenty of people who say, okay, I'm changing. I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah. it's like, Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Well, I could literally talk to you for hours, but I know it's going to be quite long. So I don't know how many people will still be here now. So if you stayed to this long, amazing. Um, I just want to ask, like, it's kind of more topical about now, but I wanted to ask it um, because I saw um, a few weeks ago, you did a post about your involvement with casino royale after seeing mm -hmm. was it the 13th documentary um and this yeah, is 13. yeah on netflix yeah relating to the black lives matter movement and everything that's going on mm -hmm. right now which is absolutely crazy like it's to me it makes no sense we should just all love respect care for each other regardless of race gender views all this kind of stuff and it's just gone crazy but um i was really surprised to see your post and kind of your reflection on your role um so for those who haven't seen the post, can you just kind of explain what you said and where a few weeks later, if you're still in the same kind of thought process? Yeah, yeah, I'm still in the same process. For me, it's like, uh, again, very important. I'm very proud of what I've done and the opportunities, being, the opportunities being given to me to be in this opening sequence. But I can't help myself, as I said, to have a bit of test of being a, a black guy who's portrayed a villain who's been chased by, like, by a cop, a white cop, and he's been killed, you know? Even say, oh yeah, but he, he was a bomber, he was a terrorist. However, the, the pictures, the cliche of it, when you see what happened with George Floyd, for me, it's just like, it's just like, and knowing when you see the documentary, what some people with very bad value and a pure racist and a supremacist, what they've been created using the system and the, and the, the court to really uh, prevent uh, black people to, to get to, to access to just like a health uh, situation and live happily and stuff like that. And, and uh, it's undeniable when you look at what happens, oh my God, they've been that far. So, uh, um, so I got my view on this and for me, it doesn't change. It's like, of course, it, people can say it's a bit naive and many people can play villain and stuff like that. Yeah, it's true. As a movie, it's true. But as a, I love to be, I would love to be an inspiration. That's what I want. And for me, I know I'm still an inspiration for the movement point of view, but for all the guy who's been put in jail, the black guy who's been put in jail, they, do grow up, they didn't grow up with the dad, they, do, they need role models. They need role models. And, and also the idea of there is some supremacist who really push the envelope of saying black people, they're only good for stealing, uh, um, raping, you know, you know, people like really try to condition like this. For me, it's, oh, oh yeah, so parkour is, oh yeah, parkour. I must um, make sure I don't go on a rooftop. I don't show the idea of trespassing and stuff like that. You know, so it makes me more conscious about, especially as a black guy, it's like, man, you cannot do that because some people, it will serve the agenda of other people, the bad people, I'm saying. Because the whole idea of white, black, white, black, for me, it's like, uh, the, it's, it's true there is white privilege. It's, it's been put in place. But I grew up also, what is very important, I'm not from America. I'm yeah. from France. And I do, have, I do have racism in France, but it's not the same. It's like, it's absolutely not the same. Uh, I was pretty lucky to grow up in a place where it's quite uh, multiracial and it's being more uh, culturally... Uh, I think from someone in America, who come in every, for example, I think it will be baffled. <laughs> you know, I'm sure there is, there is some people racist there and there, mm. but the overall idea is that, what? <laughs> because it's multicultural, like, 
melting pot like my friend david bellas my friend is is white i grew up with him i've been with his like in his family all the time he's mixed race but he's more like when you look at him he's white you know but i think for all these years he never the the subject like it's very dear in america stuff like that. i was pretty lucky because uh the environment i grew up within my friends it never happened in a working place i experienced racism in the school, I experienced this, but in generally speaking, in a friendship way, the whole idea is just like, I don't know, guys, I, I, I can hear it, I understand it, I understand apartheid, I understand what happened in America, so far, but I was lucky. I just, I, I was lucky, good, right place at the right moment. But for me, I'm still an ambassador. I've got the responsibility to show like, Enough of, uh, uh, now, now they're more aware because for a long time now, black people keep complaining about the black guy who's just killing, uh, who's being killed in a movie very quickly. I don't know if you ever heard about that, mm -hmm. but we were very aware. And for black people, it just strikes you in the face. Like uh, there is many movies I can recall to you. And I say, you see, they killed the black guy. They killed the black guy. They killed the black guy. Aliens movie, aliens. The guy just said to the girl, run. In reality, everyone's run away. No one's going to be in front of the monsters or that. No, it's just, uh, the movie King Kong or so. There is the movie King Kong. It's King Kong. Who's going to stand in front of King Kong? You, you, there is nothing you can do. Yet, the guy just say, guys, run. I'm going to slow him down. <laughs> That's so stupid. You know? So anyway, so for me, for, for me, it's something that struck me like in my face. And for me, sir, could we have like, like good role models. Some people say, yeah, oh yeah, but you've got Will Smith, you've got uh, Cuba Goldwyn Jr., you've got, you know, like you've got plenty of uh, like uh, Idris Elba and stuff like that. Yeah. And, but I would say, okay, name one in France. Mm. And people say, uh, yeah, okay. Name one in UK, you say Idris Elba, name two or three. So there is, but you see, so for me it's like, and, and, and for example in America, I say, what is the proportion of, of black people in prison? Yeah, it's huge, isn't it? Yeah, so for me, it's like it has to be proportional. Like we need to show them. And also, they say, yeah, but you've got the athletes and stuff like that. I'm an athlete, but for me, we need to train the brain or so. I, don't, I want to show like, I'm a good entrepreneur. I'm, I'm tired of showing like just, there is a lot of cliche I'm tired because I'm still, I'm, I'm listening rap music, stuff like that, but this is not my proportion of music I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening a lot of type of music. But for me, I don't want to be in a cliche where I think it will serve other people with bad agenda. Uh, I mean, like people will say, you see what I'm saying? Like, see how they talk about girls and how they do this and they do drugs. And then for me, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Some people does this, but there is other way. There is other way of doing things. And that's why I want to say you want to have different alternative. If you see, for example, Bruce Lee, because it's a good inspiration of myself, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, he was, he had his potential a long time ago. He had his potential, but we barely miss him. He had to go in Asia to, to, to do something and then to come back. And now, look, is an inspiration only for Asian? No, it's an inspiration for everyone. Yeah. So for me, it, it, we can be inspiration for everyone. So many people say, oh, Seb, your opening sequence is amazing. I remember your opening sequence. But what did I do after that? Mm, yeah. So clearly, clearly I had the potential as an action hero. I'm not talking about a Shakespearean hero <laughs> because the... Uh, not sure about that one, but as an action hero, I had, I had a chance to do something. I never had any opportunities. No one contacted me. So I'm not bitter about that because this is like, this is how you learn. Uh, very important also for whoever listened to me. Uh, for my point of view as a black person, for me, it's very important to say, uh, I'm, I don't looking for privilege. You know what I mean? I know there is privilege, but I don't want in exchange other privilege. That's not what I will never want that. I want my fight. I want my fair, but I want my fair fight, you know, skill for skills. Because I would be stupid say, okay, now, oh, they suffer so much. Now, I have, we will have like crap music, crap film, crap music, crap because we put everyone. No, we still need to value skills and, and, uh, and effort. But the, as I said, the main problem is when you know there is people like, even you are talented, they just put you down. And that's, that's for me, that's the main problem. And I would say that racism is a problem, but the biggest problem is when you put someone who's racist in a position of power. Mm. This, is the, this is the best because like I say, I can choose, I, I've got so many friends like you, for example, I can say, 
I put him in politics. I put him, you know, I, because I know how we're thinking. He's going to think equal and stuff like that. I've got plenty of white friends going to do that. Guess what? Some people are on top. They've got wrong value, wrong mindset. Guess what happened? You see? You, you think about the, the stories. Uh, that's a slightly different subject, but still I made my point. Uh, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Weinstein? Yeah, you see? Big power, very powerful. Guess what? What he's doing? You want to get, you need to pass the threshold. If you want to get there, you need to pass through me. You see? So for me, it's like, this is exactly what I mean by that. So if it's my neighbor's got the same scheme, same mindset, it's still really bad, but it doesn't have the power. And that's the problem. Epstein also, it's the same, Epstein. You see? Mm -hmm. Nobody says anything. Why? Because he was too powerful. So his behavior, if he was my neighbors, he was in jail straight because they won't say, oh, yeah, oh, that's enough. But if you put someone with a bad value and stuff like that, and there is on top and it's got a lot of contact, our entire society, anyone, any race, any gender, we're all in trouble. We are all in trouble. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and for me, as I say, I root for the black people because the, if you look at history, what is good now, people now are very aware because I'm thinking probably some people start to say, oh, they keep whining. <laughs> You know, they're just like, nah, 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 nah. for me, it's like, oh, 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 wait, just look what happened. Look what truly happened. How people just like destroy, destroy like families and culture and, and everything is being done. And there is no uh, compensation and stuff like that. And anything, the society tried to do this, but I think it's going to be very hard because it's such a big uh, damage. Uh, who's going to find the solution? Yeah, it's, it's a very tricky subject because I say, I'm glad I'm not a president of a, of a country because I'm a dad. I've got two daughters. To make just two daughters happy, it's a task. Just only two daughters happy. Alors, make just my, uh, just my, uh, I don't know, my uh, uh, little local place, everyone's happy, good luck. Cities, <laughs> country. Yeah. Okay. I'm done. So that's why even I got my opinion, I'm just like, okay, I, I say what, I, what I'm thinking, what I stand for. But for me, honestly, it's tough. <laughs> Make everyone happy. It's tough. It's, it's, it's a tough job. It's crazy. For, for me, like I, I understand, obviously, I'm white. I have white privilege, whether I've kind of like been conscious of it up until now or not. I've never sort of been racially abused or been discriminated because of the color of my skin or anything. And like you said, with the free running side, going out, climbing stuff, being on rooftops or whatever, I never thought, oh, if someone sees me, they're gonna think that I'm necessarily a criminal. Like I can imagine, as you say, like being black on top of being on a rooftop somewhere, like it's, it's something else, which again, it's, it kind of plays to that stereotype and it's something that's just crazy. So I think that your opening scene is still um, inspirational, but I completely get what you're saying in terms yeah. of you're still perceived as the bad guy, it's still a white person overruling a black um, terrorist, um, but for me... It makes you, you think, it makes yeah. you think. Like, uh, I'm not from America, I've been in America because I did my world tour, I met all my friends over there. I, I was amazed like, to see like, how many weapons they've got in their house. <laughs> I never grew up with the... Like, I, it's like, it's a concept I didn't, like, people need to understand, it's a concept that I never grew up with. Like, oh yeah, I've got three, but my neighbor's got five, and he's got six. For me, it's like, what? What's the point? Oh, it's fine, dude. Because it's normal. I can't understand. Yeah? Yeah. But for me, it's like, it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. So, knowing that, I would say, I'm not going outside without anyone and going jumping any walls or stuff like that, or any fence. Because someone can, by mistake, think I'm doing something, and rightly so, I'm jumping over a fence, so it's like, so he can shoot me. But with the racism on top of that, he can give an excuse for someone to do it. For me, it's like, oh, well, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Now I got the concept, I'm no more naive. For me, it's like, whoa, that's, that's, that's something, you know what I mean? So for me, it's like, uh, yeah, it, it, makes you, it makes you think a lot, like all this idea about, uh, uh, um, yeah, people can, uh, yeah, for, I, I've got a good example. You know, I did my world tour, it was the, no, two, two years ago. And uh, we went in, uh, where was it? Austria, I went in Austria. 
And uh, so the guy, before to come to see me, you know, we're at parkour, you know, meet each other. Hey, it's coming. You got with my phone and stuff like that. I arrived in this uh, train station. The guy came and the police, the police came and just like surrounding me and my friends. The, the, the Australian guy, they're all white, okay? But they were more surprised than me because they grew up there and this, they never, ever experienced that. We, I did an interview like, it was yesterday before yesterday about that because it, it's still reminding. For him, it still stays stick in his mind, especially with now what happened with George Floyd. He said, oh yeah, that's true. Because they were surprised like in their lifetime, they never had any interaction with the police, never, ever. And in one, one uh, organ, organ, we organized to meet someone. I arrived, I arrived in the train station. Guess what? Police come and, okay, who's this guy? We need to take his, uh, and they start to take uh, all like, want to see my passport and stuff like that and then surrounding and calling and stuff. And they were like, they, I can see that, me, I was quite relaxed because it was like, meh, you know? Yeah. But I can see their face, they were like, uh, not shocked, but a little bit like, what's going on, what, 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 what happened? And could you imagine, I did that, you know sometimes you wait in one place and you just want to jump, do balance, you know? I didn't do any of that. I was just simply in the middle, just waiting for them. And just like that, I had people around. Could you imagine, uh, that's why I say, wherever, wherever you are, whatever, you need to think carefully, wherever, wherever country you go, which, which, what do you convey? Mm. You know what I mean? It's very, for me, I think it's very important. For black people, we know that, it's very important. Now, I'm very happy now everyone can see this <laughs> because now they've seen it live. Unfortunately, for George Floyd, but now people can see. It's not just a joke, it's, it's serious. But, but as I say, for me, it's like, uh, it goes for everyone. It's a jungle out there. You need to be careful. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's just like, it's a nervous laugh, but this is it. Yeah. Well. So yeah. So so I I don't change my my view for for James' one point of view. It's just like I have an amazing opportunities, but I think I had the potential to be an action hero, to be an action hero, and I would love to do that. I would I would have loved to do that because now my past changed a little bit. Nobody knows the future, but yeah. Yeah. But for like for me growing up, I saw you on telly. It wasn't it wasn't like, oh, who's this black person jumping around? It's this person is moving amazingly. I want to move like him. So you have been my role model and my inspiration from Thank a young you. age. So it's Thank you. brought me to who I am now. So you are a role model and what you do is amazing. So like, it's been an absolute yeah. pleasure to talk to you. Um, where can people find out um, more about you or get in contact with you if they want to actually follow what you do? Instagram, they type my name on Instagram. They can find Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and my website www.foucan.com. So I'm I'm online. I'm very reachable, especially Instagram. I'm an Instagram person, so I'm very very reachable. Uh, and that's it. And voila, nice and easy. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but the, wow. the thing, like, okay, before before you finish, for me it's very important. Also, sometimes I always had in my head, like, I don't know very. Are you? In, where are you in America? You're in America, right? No, England as well. Are you in England? Okay, yeah, okay. In England. I thought you were in America. Okay, so you're in England. Uh, yeah, so for example, in England, just in England, you, where are you in, in, in England, by the way? Uh, Hampshire, South Coast. So, oh, okay. it was like, because we're talking like this, uh, yeah. somewhere far. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're they're <laughs> okay, so uh, you're, still, you're still there, near here. Okay, good. So, if you look at the scene, the, the parkour scene in, uh, in UK, how many black guys practice parkour? Hmm. No, it's a bit like for local, I, there's hardly any that I've really trained with in Portsmouth, yeah. Fairham, Southampton, like over the years, it was only if I came to say London or the bigger cities, like it, it wasn't as common. Yeah, you, you see, you see, you see a few, you go in America, I've been in America, I can't, I almost can't count in my hands, like the, the amount of the black people who's practicing, you see. So for me, it's like someone needs to study why, why there is no more because it's we know it's super cool <laughs> we know it's a very cool and it, it does a lot of great stuff for the mind and stuff like that. but like like you can see obviously there is a demographic uh, like uh, aspect here uh, even like i say I'm, I'm i'm gonna be pretty short and quick on this but even like sometimes thinking oh how about you go in, in africa and teach but i don't want to teach uh parkour in africa because i want to teach people to be an entrepreneur to to make something out of their life, not jumping around. So you see, for me, it looks like parkour. It's almost like a, 
um, uh, uh, a middle class practice. Yeah. And I know there's people who are poor practice, okay? But in terms of do something with your life, I'm thinking, uh, do a bit of parkour, but don't do only parkour. Mm -hmm. That probably is going to be my, my last word for, for the podcast. Is that, so yeah, do a bit of parkour, but don't do only parkour because uh, you need to uh, upgrade your game. <laughs> amazing. Uh, yeah, as I said, it's been amazing to talk to you. Uh, if anyone right, has made it, right away to the end, you're amazing too. Make sure, go follow Seb, um, go show him some love and enjoy your, uh, what was the phrase you called for your dinners, your green, your green foods? Ah, okay. The, uh, when you say like, uh, night is green. Night is green, no. yeah. Ah, no, my medic, the medic. You're talking yeah. about the medic. The yeah, enjoy my medic. Yes, yes. Enjoy your medic, guys, definitely. And uh, Mitch, you're more than welcome. Anytime you come, you can come to the academy, say hi. I will. Your door is open, my friend. Amazing. I will see you again soon. Okay, you take care. Take care. Bye.